What's up, everybody? Another episode of Community Voices. Today, we've got a very special guest, a dear friend of mine, Cora Mama June, uh, super accomplished within the fashion industry, celebrating 50 years of life, 30 days of June. You gotta check out the hashtag, by the way. Um, yeah, I don't even have enough superlatives to describe how amazing you are, but thank you for joining. You're very kind. <laughs> thank you for having me. I mean, yeah, you are in this universe right now, and it is still. 30 days of June, which is exciting. Okay. And this is my milestone birthday. I mm. I am so blessed to have, I'm a half a century, as Puppy would say, a yeah. modern art. I'm modern art. A mid-century. He called me mid-century. <laughs> Hanging up in the Louvre somewhere. That's all right. right. I so we could only we could only wish, right? <laughs> One day. So cool. So let the let's talk about who you are, because I feel like you know, like you and I we both kind of operate behind the scenes in a sense, but you're just like so integral into like, you know, what people wear, dating from like, from like Missy to like Jay and everybody in between. So, you know, talk about who you are and, and your journey in space. Yeah, I mean, at the, at the heart of me, I'm a West Indian born, you know, woman who was raised in the Bronx by a single mom and, you know, self-made entrepreneur. Um, and I, you know, I worked very hard to get where I am today. And um, it's, you know, I'm still on the journey. I'm still, you know, every year I circle the sun. I think about ways of reinventing myself. I think about ways on how I can improve the way I think about how I want to leave this, you know, what I want to leave behind. You know, it, it goes fast, right? And, you know, the life cycle, you know, I, I always feel like it's so important to, collect yourself after taking that full 365 days. You, it's, I, I think it's nice to do self check-ins. Right. You know, I, I think, you know, maintaining not just a physical, great physical sense and strength, but a mental, uh, you know, mental maintenance is very important. So I, I like to balance my life with, you know, it can't just be all work. And, you know, you have your family, you have your work, you have your career. And I, I like to kind of pace myself and kind of find balance in knowing that if I don't do this, then I'm not gonna enjoy this. Right. So, you know, for me, it's like, oh, you know, to give, I'm, I'm in a career where we're givers. We're always taking care of other people. Yeah. So I come first and being able to say that feels so, it's so liberating. It's so freeing to say I come first and it's okay. And most, you know, moms don't want to say that, <laughs> you know, because it sounds like, oh, she's so, so consumed, you know. Um, but that's not even the case, because, you know, like, you're so giving in, in the space you work in, it's like, you're always catering to, you know, whoever the talent may be. So, like you mentioned, it's all about, you know, having your mental space in a clear uh, area and making sure you take care of yourself, too, you know. Yeah. And I think it's also important to, you know, young people, people that are coming that need that will need to stand on my shoulders. I stood on shoulders of other greats that came before me. And then I know that I have the responsibility to kind of create an environment for them that's better than the one that I had. You know, it's always gotta be better than what we had. You know, as things get better, it always has to be better than what we experienced, you know? And I, I think about it in that way. You know, what opportunities can we create what positions and seats at what tables we need to sit at so that I can pave the way or I can create an opportunity culturally, you know, for young women of color, for young men of color. Mm -hmm. And I say of color because, you know, for so many years they've gone overlooked and I, I have no regrets. I feel like, you know, you speak for those who, who, who don't have the words or can't, you know, or don't have the ability to speak for themselves. And that's, a, that's part of the journey. That's part of the receiving is to, to give and it could be the little things. It could be a little advice. It could be, you know, it doesn't have to be you write a check or it doesn't have to be, you know, that you spend an hour on the phone with someone, but it could be just that little bit. And also what you put out into the universe, yeah. you know, what's on your social, you know, like how you greet people when they meet you for the first time. And like all those things to me matter. I think that, you know, at the end of my life, I want people to think, you know, to remember me as someone who was approachable, but still someone that they held to high regards. And, you know, I think most people, when they want to be, 
you know, revered. They don't think they, they can be, you know, pleasant and so, you know, and approachable at the same time yep. because there's always like these boundaries. Um, and maybe I can say that because I, I don't have fans chasing me in the streets and I don't know what it's like <laughs> to, you know, to have people staring through my windows. But, I, you know, at some level, I've experienced people that celebrate me, you know, and I think that's that's a humbling experience. Sure. You know, that that creates space for me to be giving because I know that they don't have to. Yeah. And even when you talk about giving, I remember all those years ago when we first met, uh, shout out to Christine Sue, who actually connected the dots with me. And it was just like, you know, backstage at the concert. Of Ball. It's, it's it's just like, I don't know you, da, 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 get away. But I guess it's like, yes. we, like you were talking about giving and just seeing me and it was just like mm -hmm. the way everything just kind of like came together and just... Well, everyone needs a shot, right? Yeah. You know, everyone needs, everyone just needs a shot. Some people get one shot, some people get multiple, yeah. you know, but when you see something in someone because they had the, you actually, you were relentless and you were consistent and that's what it takes. You know, sometimes that's what it takes. And when you recognize that in someone who's trying to just do their job or, you know, win, how do you, how do you deny that? You yeah. know, like, how do you not at least... If it's not with you, connect them to someone who can handle it or take care of it. It's, right. it's a very small thing, you mm -hmm. know, so um, yeah, don't stop being like, you. Being there and then knowing I was going to be backstage, but knowing that you were going to be there. So I was like, nah, I need to make this happen. And then after <laughs> the I finished, I'm going back to the office, which is like right across the street from TD Garden. I, I, I know, it was crazy. Nah, I got to go back. I got to go back and make this happen. So then I go in. So I'm like, oh, no, what you want to do that? And then, it was like, yeah, and then I just ran into your kids. They were super friendly, and then ran into you. And <laughs> yeah, my kids are always around. Yeah, all these years. It's like, a family affair with me. You know, oh, when you get me, you get you get the tribe, you yeah. know, especially because you know we have these careers that we're always on the move. And you, you don't get to spend quality time unless they you take them along for the ride. Because yeah. I want them to kind of, you know, be exposed to certain things, what hard work looks like. You know, I was a latchkey kid. I knew that my mom, you know, when she was absent, I knew exactly why and what she was doing and what she had to sacrifice to provide. And I, I'm just so fortunate enough to have a career where my kids can come along for the ride. That's a beautiful luxury. Everyone doesn't have that luxury. You know, we used to have to come home from school, lock the door and stay safe, right. my sister and I. And, you know, that was our way of being good to our mother. Mm -hmm. Giving yeah. her like a peace of mind and that her kids. Yeah, yeah. While she's out. Yeah. And running and working. So yeah. speaking about, you know, your career in fashion, take us through just like, you know, for any aspiring kids who want to, you know, be like June or be in the same kind of place. So what kind of advice can you give to kids and just stylists in general? Um, you know, it's a, it's hard work. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's not something, overnight. you know, it's not like uh, a, you can't become June overnight and you snap your fingers and it just happens. No, I mean, it's, it's, like, it's a commitment, you know, it's, it's a lot, you will miss a lot of, you know, you, you'll look back and be like, well, I, I didn't get to go to this and I didn't get to do that. I mean, it is a sacrifice because you have to pace yourself, you know, like you can't spend hours and hours at the club drinking and drugging. And then the next morning, 5 a.m. wake up call, you got to take care of something else or you have to creatively wrap your head around while you're putting something together. You need that time to process and be a creative. So right. sometimes your social life might not seem as exciting in your younger years because your art is, is you know, you've comp you said my art means more to me than you have to be prepared to make those decisions. Yeah. And, um, you know, I say that you, you have, it's, it's 80% it, I would say it's 75% business and 25% creative. For sure. Because if you don't handle your business, you can't be creative. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you just, you just don't, you, you just don't survive, you know, and, and no one wants to hear that because, you know, most creators are like, we're aloof. We're like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. why do I have to, you know, pay bills or why do I have to? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be creative and that's it. I just want to be creative. But, you know, Part of you know sustaining, building, and growing is being economically being economically sound requires you know some skill and thought, and I think it also allows you a creative freedom as well. 
just right. for you in general. If you are, and also, you know, we, we have to start thinking about generational wealth and how we build that. And um, so I'm always thinking, I've always been thinking about how I don't raise my kids the way I was raised. And now don't get me wrong. I was raised in, in, in the most loving environment. I never felt unsafe. Yeah. I never wanted for anything. But, you know, when you're exposed, you travel the world and you're exposed to certain things and, you know, us being fresh year fun kids, knowing what it was like to leave the home and experience and that's someone else's life yeah. is life changing. So the more I expose, you know, my kids to things that are bigger than me, um, the more that their, their aspirations will grow because it's easy to be like, you know, this is enough because yeah. this is how I was raised. Mm -hmm. But I always felt like I wanted more from a very young age. Yeah. It was just who I was. Especially when you talk about the kids and they see all that at a young age, the work ethic, like the high relentless. Totally. Age. But and they're I, grounded, you know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to raise assholes. You know, they're super, you know, they're, they, they're humble. They have, big, you know, personalities key. They care about others. Mm -hmm. um, I think all those things outweigh any bag you can get, you know, integrity. You know, can you look at yourself in the mirror? Did you know that you did something that didn't compromise who you were? You know, you didn't put something before self for sure. and um that's important to me yeah and then uh last question because i know how busy you are um talk about like your relationship with the fresh air fund and you know the work you've been doing with them so i know i mean for, i yeah i mean i first to sit on the board as a former alumni is a huge honor um when i was asked to i they honored me one year, then they asked me to join the board. And for me, it was just like such a full circle moment, right. knowing how life changing it was for me and being able to be part of something that's going to impact other kids' lives. When you think about some of the atrocities that are happening to our kids in the inner cities, whether it's through police brutality or domestic you know, violence and abuse or whatever it is, the, the ability to be able to offer them an, an escape yeah. is so life changing. You know, even if you are in a loving environment and none of those atrocities are really happening to you, because every kid growing up in the inner city is not suffering, yeah. right? You know, um, everyone's situation. I always say, you know, we we may all be in the same water, but we're not all in the same boat, yep. you know, and awesome. everyone's boat sizes are different mm -hmm. and how and what condition they're in is different. And so I never make the mistake of saying, oh, we're all in the same boat. No, we're not. <laughs> you might be all in the same body of water. Like in a big yacht and then someone else like in a little rowboat, you know? Right. But here's the thing. They're still able to get across the pond. Exactly. They're still able to get from one destination to another. It might not be as sexy as the guy in the big yacht, but they're making it happen the way they know how. And they may be carrying cargo. They may be feeding, you know, fish. They may be feeding a, a starving village. They don't have to be in a yacht to do that, right? So... You know, it's how you quantify wealth, how you see what, what, you know, what wealth really means. And I feel like, you know, richness is, can be quantified in so many different ways. My experience at the Fresh Air Fund was such a rich experience that I wanted to be able to be part of a conversation that, um, that I can contribute and, and raise awareness and funds and stuff like that for other kids is a huge, huge um, experience for me and blessing for me. It's it changes you every time that you give to someone else. It makes you that much better of, of a person. You feel alive. Yeah. You know, there's there's no there's no other word, you know feeling to describe it. It's just it's just a good feeling. Yeah, and even with my mom, like just growing up in Hunts Point in the Bronx too, it's just like mm -hmm. you want me out the house, especially in the summer, instead of like in the streets doing something I probably shouldn't be doing. But then right. just how to you know just show that there's different things out there besides mm -hmm. Hunts Point Ave and Loretto Street, you know? Right. Like, you no, know, that's, I was like, wow. And look at you now, you're international, like, hustler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, label wearing, rolling the dice, you know? Look at, look at you now. Right, you sometimes got to pinch yourself and say, wow, I can't believe this is my life. Sometimes I look up when I look at the Chrysler building and the Empire State building from my bed and I'm just like, I can't believe, you know, yeah, this is my so life. I'm so, so grateful. Cool. And just seeing where you came from and where you're at. Now. So. I'm so I'm so grateful. And yeah. and listen, it's and and I've been around people that have so much more that makes this feel like <laughs> like you're poor. You know what I mean? It depends. Right. Um, 
but I still, you know, when you look back, like you said, at where you've come from, it's truly, it's humbling. It makes me smile. So even on my worst day, if I'm having a bad day, I just, you know, I think about those who are having an even <laughs> more good day. Yeah. You know, those who can't get out of the bed, those who are suffering, you know, mentally and emotionally, those who have been stricken by illness. And so, you know, I'm grateful for every little thing. Being able to just wake up, open my eyes and get up out of the bed is a huge blessing. For sure. And then, yeah, shout out to the Fresh Air Funds definitely for like, you know, providing these experiences for kids in like the inner city like you and I. And mm -hmm. you being on the board. And us at Finish Line with this uh, community voices, we love to hear these stories and, you know, continue the conversation and just inform people about what's going on. So with that being said, we'd love to make a donation to the Fresh Air Fund um, on your behalf as well. So I'm sure we'll be super excited about that. And we both know yeah. where we're going because we experienced That's this. right. That's so, right. Yeah, and us at Finish Line and Get Me Sports, we love you. No, I love you for sure. Oh, thank All you. For all you do within the community i'm so proud of you I'm thank you as well so thank you no namaste <laughs> <laughs> cool so yeah that's about it for this uh conversation i'll let you have like the last words before we wrap no i think we i think i like the way i buttoned it up and i love the way you buttoned it up i mean i think you should have the last word it's your show <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, it's our show, you know, it's all about community and, you know, sharing is caring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think that's what we learned in the pandemic, right? We learned this whole the pandemic experience was about understanding what community truly means and what it's about mm -hmm. and your neighbor and people around you that you had to care for them. You know, you had to be a little selfless and think about the simple act of wearing a mask was not just for you, but right. it was for your neighbor and your community and how we protect each other. And I mean, what a life lesson, right? Yeah. So what a great platform to um, to conversate about community. It's everything. Exactly. Especially when some communities were ravished by, mm -hmm. you know, this pandemic. So right. the fact that we stand here, you know, healthy and alive is a true testament to how <laughs> what gratefulness looks like. So, yeah. And to be able to get back to the other yeah. those platforms. So, but yeah, you know, that's the wrap. Thank you again so much, Jimmy, so much for you know making this happen and taking the time on your busy day. <laughs> Make sure everybody goes follows uh, goes to follow Drew Ambrose on Instagram. Definitely wish her a happy birthday in her comments as well. You know, big milestone. So <laughs> thank you. Cool. Thank you, Jim. Bye.